Okay, so Nathan just spotted another one down here. This is number three. And if I don't catch it, I don't know. I'm just bad at catching snakes. It's gonna start moving, isn't it? Relax, 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 relax. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Oh my gosh, dude, his belly is beautiful. Hello, it's okay. Relax, 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 relax. Snakes are some of the most misunderstood and uniquely adapted reptiles in the southeastern United States. But why do they look so odd? And is there really a reason to fear them? To really begin to understand what snakes are and where they came from, I needed help from an expert. So I'll just ask you, where the heck did snakes come from? Wow, there's a, there's a loaded million dollar question, Ben, and it, uh, it has no short answer, I can assure you. Uh, because again, you know, you talked about my 2015 paper, and that simply pushed uh, the oldest known fossils of snakes back into the middle to upper Jurassic, so 145 million years ago. Uh, not everybody agrees with me that these upper Jurassic things are snakes. Uh, the fossils are incomplete, uh, but the characteristics of the preserved bones are definitely snaky. So what do we know about the origins of snakes? Well, we know they're lizards, Ben. <laughs> That's what we know. After that, what kind of lizard? Uh, that's still open for debate. And limblessness is not uncommon uh, among modern living groups of lizards. So limblessness can't define snakes any more than it defines uh, any other group of living or fossil groups uh, of lizards. So your question to me, what is snakeness? Well, snakeness is you're a lizard of a kind, uh, a specialized lizard, and then a series of cranial specializations that at least I can pull out of the fossil record. Uh, and again, why is it all about the head? Well, almost everything out there specializes its head in some form or another around the way that it eats. And so if I have some fragmentary cranial material, I can see those specializations. Uh, in the fossil record. Those ancient snakes, they had a snake head. Wow. That's what snakeness is. Now that we know a little bit more about what snakes are and where they came from, let's head out to a local park here in North Carolina to try and find one in the wild. If we can, it'll give us a chance to observe their features in real life and investigate a different question. Why do snakes matter? Is there one right there? Yes, I didn't see it. It was around the rock. Ah! Oh. Okay, I'm going to think of that one a couple minutes to come back out. We'll come back. All right, we'll get him next time. We'll get him next time. I'm doing everything. Catch one of these. I'm just bad at catching snakes. It's going to start moving, isn't it? There we go. Okay, hold on. Let's get her to calm down. Okay, so this guy is an adult northern water snake. She's not very happy right now. Hang on. We'll get her to calm down, though. So this behavior, this, this gaping, the mouth opening, the biting, the musking, all of this is what people commonly think of as being aggressive snake behavior, but that's kind of a misconception. This is 100% defensive behavior. So now that we know what snakes are and where they came from, I wanna talk for a little bit about why snakes matter. Obviously, this is a pretty big reptile, and in fact, snakes are often the largest terrestrial vertebrates in the eastern US. And especially at this size, this animal represents a lot of energy. This would be a fantastic meal for something like a bird of prey. Um, so from that perspective, snakes are a very important food source for lots of top tier consumers. But also a large snake like this is preying on a wide variety of aquatic and semi-aquatic organisms. So everything from fish, which is particularly what northern water snakes usually like to eat, to frogs, to crustaceans, could be on the menu for a water snake like this. But snakes, as we know, come in all shapes and sizes. And throughout the southeastern US, they occupy an extremely wide variety of niches as both predators and prey. So in general, snakes make up the very important middle layer of our food chains here in the southeastern US. And without them, prey populations could get out of hand and populations of apex predators would suffer as a result of not having these animals as a food source. So the next time you see one of our scaly friends slithering across a walking trail or basking on a rock and your friends start freaking out, you can calmly explain to them that snakes are basically just fancy lizards with flexible skulls, and they do much more good for the environment than they do harm to humans. But it's time to get this individual back where she belongs, 
And so we'll drop her off in the stick stuff right here where she can kind of hang out for the rest of the afternoon, catch that sun, and then take a dip in the water when she feels like it. Or she might go not that way. Whatever you want. <laughs> that works too. Yeah. This is Benzino of the Wild Report, signing out.